first of all, lift your Bibles with me now and say with me now, Father God in heaven, let your word be in my mind. Let your word be in my heart. And let your word be on my lips. Amen and amen. <laughs> okay. So now we come to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 16 to, to 21. This is Paul talking to the Corinthian church. This is his second letter to the Corinthians. And from verse 16 he says... Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. So he's making a big statement here. You have not got to fight with the flesh. You have to understand that your fight is not against flesh and blood, it's against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So it starts off with you looking at someone and seeing them as Christ in them. It starts off with you looking at someone, it doesn't matter who it is, and choosing to see them not to see them in the flesh, but to see them in the spirit, to begin to understand them in a different way, to begin to understand that every one of us are made in the image of God. And the fact is we're all influenced by evil, but it then depends on what we do with it. But our fight isn't against the person in the flesh, and we must stop doing that. That's what God's saying to us here. We haven't got to know people in the flesh. We've got to know people as we know Christ now, which is in the Spirit. Verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's you and I, if you're a believer, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. This is where it really becomes a mature bit of teaching. This is where we start to move out from, you know, gentle Jesus, meek and mind, mild, and where we move away from the, the milk of the gospel of how great it is to be saved and that God has forgiven you. Now we're coming into responsibility as a believer. Now we're coming into having to act like Christ. Now we're coming into the believer's walk to be a an ambassador of God, as it says here. Verse 13, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Something should have changed in you. You're not the old self who is always battling in the flesh. You've got to stop that. You've got to drop that. You've got to let it go. You've got to crucify the old man who was always fighting in the flesh. Always looking at the flesh. Always comparing in the flesh. Always competing in the flesh. Always about the body and everything about image and attraction and everything else and whether you like someone or don't like someone and whether they've upset you and whether they haven't this is where we come in to the fact that we've become a new creation something major should have changed in your heart your heart should have been recreated in the gospel of Christ in the work of Christ in you when you when you repented this is also what you've been repenting of the flesh this is where we crucify the flesh and turn back to God and stop looking at other people in the flesh. It's really important. Old things, he says, old things have passed away. The old man should have passed away, at least in part, otherwise nothing's happened, nothing's changed. He says, behold, all things have become new. So to the believer, everything should have become new now. You should have a different attitude to life. Not just loving God and loving Jesus and being able to worship and praise God. No, this is a reality. This is reality bites. This is where you actually affect other people. And this is how you have to then change and be like Christ. Okay, so all things have become new. This is where we're looking for the fruit in your life. Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So, don't believe that you can actually, you know, just career through life as a bulldozer, upsetting people, hurting people, being horrible to people, being nasty, being malicious, carrying on those obviously evil ways, 
that were always against other people, that you had a fight with everyone all the time, that should change. All things are of God who is reconciled to himself. So first of all, you have been reconciled to God. Remember what it says in the Lord's Prayer and what Jesus said afterwards? If you don't forgive others their sins, your sins won't be forgiven. Now, if God has reconciled you to himself and forgiven your sins, you now have to have the responsibility to actually do the same for other people. Because it says here, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Can we say what the method, the ministry of reconciliation means? Can we really get to find out what that means? Grace upon grace. This is where grace comes in. This is where we're not supposed to be harsh. This is where we're not supposed to be malicious. This is where we're supposed to be loving and kind. This is where we're supposed to be at peacemakers because it's a peacemaker who reconciles. Jesus came as a peacemaker to this world. Jesus' main ministry was reconciliation. That's what he came for. He came to reconcile man back to God. There was no way that man could get to God, so Jesus had to come to reconcile man back to God. And that then becomes our ministry because we become like Christ if we're really truly saved. Now this is the test of your salvation. If you find this hard, you need to go back to the drawing board and ask God, what on earth is happening in your life? And you need to actually repent of these sins if you're not reconciling people, if you're not a reconciliation person, if you really can't deal with people spiritually and see people outside of the flesh, then you've got it wrong and you're not part of this ministry. You are not being like Christ. And this is surely what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be people who have a ministry of reconciliation. That means often you have to make the first move and say your sorries and actually try to bring peace to a situation. If it's anything in you that is not peaceable towards another person, you have to realize that that is your responsibility and God will not be pleased with you if you don't reconcile. That's why it says in Matthew 18 that we should go first to the person who's upset us and be reconciled with that person, to tell that person the fault that you feel that they've caused in you, that they've offended you in some way, to tell that person, direct, not gossip about them, not say, oh, I can't, you know, I don't like this person, I don't like this person who's doing this. I don't like this person because they're doing that. I don't like this person. You know, I wonder how many of us have done a bit of that in our life, you know. Anybody here can, can put their hand up to that, that we've done a little bit of that? Gossiping about other people and saying how they've hurt us and how they've offended, but haven't actually gone to the person. They've just gossiped to everybody else. And so there's a sense in which we don't really want to even admit that we do that, but we do, right? And we have done. But we've got to stop doing it. We've got to be more Christ-like. We've got to reconcile people back to God. And we have got to be reconciling people here now as a ministry. This is our ministry. If you're a leader in the church in any shape or form, then you, are, you have a ministry of reconciliation. That's your first responsibility. The main reason that Jesus came was to reconcile us back to God. And it's your first ministry as a minister. That's what makes you a minister. That's what makes you a leader, is the fact that you have grace to be able to be someone who is going to reconcile with others. That you're going to bring peace to a situation. You're not going to aggravate it. You're not going to go in and flame it. You're not going to get all nasty and malicious and vindictive. No, you're going to go in with a fresh, you have a new heart. You're a new creation and you should be going in with that new heart of grace to others. And that's what he's saying here. So we cannot just leave it to one side and say, well, that's all right for some, but it's not all right for me. No, you, everybody, anyone who's a believer, who's in the kingdom of God, needs to have the same ministry of reconciliation. peacemakers. If you've got people who are just horrible to other people, then that's a real test of whether they're actually saved in the first place. If they can't be nice, then 
there's a problem. And that's what usually happens when we get saved, that suddenly we realise that our ministry is reconciliation. Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and he's committed to us the word of reconciliation. So, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That was his main ministry, the reconciliation, to bring man back to God, to bridge the chasm between man and a holy God. Man, sinful man, and a holy God. He was the bridge, remember. Jesus was the bridge, and he was the one who reconciled us to himself and has committed us to the word of... So it's not just that you have to have a, f a sense of have this kind of peacemaking attitude inside yourself, but he's also committed to us the word of reconciliation. In other words, you can't just think it or feel it. You have to speak it out. You have to go to a person and humble yourself. And for some people, that's... That's like rocket science, to be able to humble themselves and say, you know what, there's something between us, it's not right, I really want to make it right, because I know that God's not happy with this, and I want to make this right, and I have the words in the scriptures that give me all the words that tell me and teach me that this is what I need to do, and this is what we, especially if we're believers, and even if we're not believers, we still have to do good to all people, so therefore we need to have a method of being reconciled to people and God's given us that method he's given us the word of God and the word speaks of this all the way through the New Testament you cannot read the New Testament without seeing reconciliation you know when people have fallen out there's reconciliation when the word is there it's all about reconciliation John 3 16 John 3 14 through 16 it's all about the ministry of reconciliation that God reconciled man back to himself in Christ and that's what we should be. If we're Christians, if we're believers, if we're in the kingdom, if we're brothers and sisters of Christ, if we're children of the Most High God, that is our ministry. We have to be that way. And so he's committed us the word. He's committed to us the word of reconciliation, that we need to confess our sins to one another. So if I've hurt you, I'm sorry. I have to say I'm sorry. I have to be prepared to say I'm sorry. But that's not enough. I have to then forgive you and I also have to treat you normally so I can't even do all that and I have to speak it out I need to say it when I've got opportunity I need to say it verse 20 now then now then he says <laughs> so he said all that now he's going to say now then right so I've told you all this now then this is where we're going to go now. I want you to listen now. Okay? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Oh my goodness. We're ambassadors for Christ. But we're snarling and growl growling and, and bitching and, and, and gossiping and, and, and murdering people in our minds and saying how awful they are and terrible things about other people. Where does that fit with scriptures? Where does that fit with being an ambassador? Have you seen what ambassadors do? Like ambassadors to other countries. They're there to try and bring peace. They're there to try and put the alternative side of the argument and say, well, this is what we're trying to do. We, we're ambassadors. We're representing who we're speaking on behalf of. So if you're an ambassador for Christ, you're not speaking like the Russian ambassador for, for Putin or the, the English ambassador for UK. No, you're speaking as an ambassador of Christ. There's a bit of difference. You're not speaking as a political opponent like we have with the politics of the, of the different ambassadors we have. So even they have a ministry of peace. They're trying to keep the peace. They're trying to come to an agreement. They're trying to speak to people. But we have something far more. We are ambassadors of Christ. How do you feel about that? Do you feel that you're an ambassador for Christ or you're an ambassador for you? Who are you actually ambassador for? Are you an ambassador for what you believe and all your politics and all your feelings? Or are you an ambassador for Jesus Christ? Because that's what he's saying here. As though God were pleading through us. Imagine that. 
It's as if God is pleading through us to other people. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Well, you can't be reconciled to God and hate your brother. That's what he's effectively showing us here. That's impossible. Don't say, oh, I love God. But I don't like him, and I don't like him, and I don't want that. And I don't. That's not an ambassador of Christ. You are still in your sin. You are still an ambassador for you. You're not doing the right thing. And so he says, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So going out and telling people that their house is on fire, it is important to try and do that in the right way. And sometimes we can't help people get offended by that, but we're still supposed to be reconciling people to God. We're still supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. We're still supposed to be doing this in a loving way. We're still supposed to be looking for peace, even if they've slapped you in the face, even if they've spit in your face, or even if they've mocked you that you are an idiot for following Jesus, you are still to be an ambassador for Christ and to be a peacemaker and try to reconcile people back to you and back to God. You're supposed to be a peacemaker. You're supposed to still love these people even if they've hurt you. That's what happens. And only through God's grace can you do that. Only if God has touched your heart and made you a new creature can you do that. You cannot do it in your own strength. So this is where we really need to come back to God and say, God, this is hard. I come to the end of myself. This is hard. I can't do this in my own strength. And you have to ask God to give you love for people. Verse 21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, if you're an ambassador for Christ, if he's saying you have a ministry of reconciliation, he's saying you are an ambassador for Christ, and then he's saying you are the righteousness of God in him. You cannot be righteous in God. You cannot be a minister of reconciliation. You can't be a peacemaker if you're still full of you. So we have to empty ourselves and really put Jesus on the throne of our lives and be ambassadors for Christ. Amen? Amen.